I wanted to recognize that we lost Bram Moolinar last week. Uh, now, while Bram wasn't a Freenos developer, I definitely admired his work on Vim. That's the VI improved editor. And I use Vim all the time on Linux. I know that I did a video about Ed before, and, and Ed is great for quick stuff, uh, for small things. But when I need to edit any kind of you know, file of appreciable size when I'm at a terminal, I'm actually more likely to use Vim. So let's take a look uh, at Vim. We have an older version of Vim available on FreeDOS 1.3. This is Vim 7.3a, which dates back to about uh, 2010. And you can install it using uh, FD Impuls. And if I go into FD Impuls and go down to the uh, editors group and then over the right hand side and all the way to the bottom of the list, you'll see uh, there's Vim, VI improved uh, version 7.3a. Now, I know it's an older release, but Vim doesn't really change that much from release to release. I, you know, certainly there are a lot of patches and things, but for what I use Vim for, not really a lot changes. So let's edit a file the same way that I might use Vim to edit any other kind of file. And so we're going to do uh, Vim on a C programming file. We'll just do like a little Hello World program. So we'll do Vim on hello.c. Now, uh, if you know VI or Vim, you know that it's a mode-based editor. You're either in command mode or in edit mode. And so here we're starting up in command mode. And so I need to enter a command, a letter instruction that tells uh, Vim what to do. And so I might do an I, lowercase i, to start inserting text where I have the cursor or A to start appending text after the cursor, or I can do a capital I that'll start inserting text before the current line. Uh, capital A will uh, append a text after the current line, things like that. So let's just go ahead and start with an I, and now it'll start inserting text where I am right now. You notice that the cursor has changed. Let's go ahead and write our program. So we'll do a include uh, standard IO dot H, and we'll do an integer function called main and we're going to do a, a put s of, uh, let's say, hello world. Now, I'm going to intentionally misspell this, um, and uh, we'll see why in a second. And then we'll return back the operating system with zero, and then I can do my uh, closing curly brace. And so this is how you might use VI to edit a file on a Unix system, on a DOS system, whatever. Now, if I go and hit escape, that puts me back into command mode. And you see, notice that my cursor changes again. Now, if you can use the arrow keys to get around, but at least on my virtual machine, uh, there's a problem with that in that the um, uh, it seems to uh, do like double keystrokes on things. So if I use the up arrow from where I am right now, it'll actually go up two lines instead of one line, right? So there it is, goes up two lines. Uh, and then, you know, the right arrow key goes over two letters at a time. And so it's kind of hard to get exactly where you want it to be. Uh, but that's okay. You know, some DOS programs, by the way, do have that problem. They, I think it's because they use different methods to pull the keyboard and maybe gets keystrokes. Uh, but it really only seems to be a problem with extended keys like arrows. And of course, your mileage may vary if you're running this on real hardware or maybe a different virtual machine. But that's okay because my fingers remember the HJKL keys for arrow keys. So Bram did a great video on the history of VI and he explained that how Bill Joy chose those keys because on his terminal where he wrote the original VI, it had the arrow keys on uh, H, J, K, and L. So that's where H, J, K, L comes from. So if I use uh, L, you'll notice I can go over one character at a time. And if I were to use uh, J, that goes down one line. If I use K, it goes up one line. And then uh, H allows me to go back. And so you can actually navigate a file using H, J, K, and L. And if you're like me and you've built up this muscle memory, it actually is really helpful uh, to know those keys. My, fing my fingers just sort of remember that. Now, remember I said that I misspelled the words. So let's actually go all the way up to the top of the file. So I could do that with the arrow keys. But let's say I was in a long file. I can actually say, let's jump up to the to the first line. So I can do an escape and I can do colon and then I can give it a line number. So let's go up to the first line here, the first line. And now my cursor is at the first line. Well, I know that somewhere in this file, I have uh, misspelled the word world. And of course I can see it on my screen right here. And I could jump right to that by using slash 
And now this does a search. And so this I can do WRLD. That's the misspelled version of world. And hit return on that, and it jumps my cursor right to WRLD. And I could use the L key to get over here, and I could insert a new character, I, and that allowed me to type in an O, but I don't have to do that. Let's escape back out of this. Uh, I can also do it another way, and I, that I can uh, I can change the word. So CW allows me to change the word that I'm on. So if I felt like I needed to miss, you know, if I would misspelled like more than just one letter, I might want to just retype the whole world. And so I can just do hello world, and there we go. So now it's it's uh, I've now changed that single word that it was on. And if I hit escape, I go back into command mode. And so this is kind of the your muscles and your fingers kind of remember all these different keystrokes. It's kind of weird that I don't actually have to think about how to change a word my fingers just know how to go to cw uh and uh you know what's also great is that you know vim on freedos is the same as vim on linux so i'm going to go back to linux here in a second but let's first save my file so i'm going to do escape which puts me into command mode which already was in uh, and if i do colon this allows me to insert a command like i might ask it to write my file back to disk so w would write the file if i hit return on this it would just write the file uh, but i'm also going to exit the editor at the same time so wq will write the file and then quit back to the operating system and so there we are uh, by the way, if, if you ever get it into a situation where you get into a file and you don't know how to get out, uh, rather than like rebooting your machine, let's do back hello.c, uh, rather than, uh, you know, like rebooting your machine or, or killing the, uh, the terminal window or something, just, just do uh, escape because if you're in command mode or edit mode, that'll get you back into command mode. And then uh, you can do colon and then you can do Q. And if you had made any edits at all, uh, this would give you a warning, but if you do Q exclamation point, you're just saying, look, I'm going to abort all of my edits and I just want to go back to the operating system. So if you ever somehow get into Vim, uh, you're not sure how to get up, uh, get out, uh, just do escape colon Q exclamation point, and that'll get you back to the operating system. And as I was saying, the great thing about Vim is it's the same on, uh, you know, Linux or any other system that has Vim on it. So let's jump over to a Linux system. So here I've got my Linux terminal and I've SSH'd over to one of my servers. So uh, this is what I've got over there, just a readme file. And if I were to do a cat on that readme file, it's just a couple of lines from a readme that might have come from an old uh, DOS program uh, back in the... Uh, in the mid 1990s and so if i were to start editing this uh i would just do uh vim on uh, on readme and so there we go i've got uh i've got my file the same as i was doing before on a uh, on a file under freedos and i can use the arrow keys to move around so i can do down and to the right and up and to the left uh, i can also of course use the the uh, H, J, K, and L, uh, which is really what my fingers want to do. And so there I am going uh, to the right. Uh, there I am going down with J uh, and then back to the left with H. Now I could edit this file, uh, but before I do that, let's actually uh, uh, reformat the file a little bit. So I'm going to escape back to the operating system, escape, colon, and then Q. I haven't made any changes, so I can just do Q. And... Uh, let's uh, let's reformat the file. Let's do uh, uh, FMT, and this will reformat the file using a width of about 50 characters uh, of README, uh, and we'll put it into a new file called README.first. And so now I've got two files in there, and let's do a Vim on, um, uh, on README.first. And I need to make some changes to this. And so, for example, uh, this is an old... Uh, you know, this might be a, a README file from an older program, and that program uh, works on both MS-DOS and Slackware, where well, I'm a FreeDOS guy. I want to be able to indicate that this runs on FreeDOS. So let's go ahead and change all instances of the word uh, MS-DOS into FreeDOS. And actually, I don't have to do the whole thing. I can just do the MS hyphen. So I'll do escape in case I was in edit mode. That gets me back into command mode. And then colon. And then I'm going to uh, swap some text here. And then a slash to start indicating where that text needs to be. And so I might do MS uh, exclamation or MS uh, hyphen. So you can actually highlight the first instance of that. And then a slash and now i can start inserting the text that i want to replace this with and so i'm going to do that with free 
uh, and then another uh, slash. And so what that does is that'll now swap the ms hyphen with free. And so now I can say it uh, compiles on both uh, FreeDOS and uh, and Slackware. Now it only happened on the first line because I only did a, a, a simple S. Uh, let me go ahead and undo that. So I'm going to do colon and undo. Uh, and then uh, if I do uh, a, again, back to, I always do the escape to start, <laughs> even though I don't really need it. I only need it if I'm escape, if I'm in edit mode and then colon, and I'm going to say uh, from line one and then comma, and then all the way to the end of the file, I'm going to swap the MS hyphen and now it's highlighting both instances of MS and then change that with free and then another slash. And so now I've got, uh, I've changed both instances of uh, MS DOS to free DOS. Now, if I want to do that on Slackware, I've got a problem because I've got two instances of Slackware. So Slackware is an old uh, Linux distro I used to run. Let's just change it to Linux. And, you know, let's say it was a very long file here. This is just four lines. We know it's just only change only needs to be made on line two. Uh, but uh, let's go ahead and, and say uh, uh, colon uh, one comma uh, dollar. And that gets it from line one all the way to the end of the file. I'm going to swap uh, Slackware with uh, Linux. And if I do it just this way, it's actually only going to change the first instance of Slackware on that line. And so I need to just, let's do a colon undo and that'll get, uh, undo the changes made. So we'll do one, um, one comma dollar for the one to the end of the line or end of the file. And then we'll swap, uh, Slackware with, uh, Linux. And since we need to make this global across any line, we need to use G. And so now it will make that change across multiple instances of, uh, finding Slackware. And so there we go. It's now changed Slackware to Linux, uh, and it was only on one line, so we only had that one change. So that's how I use uh, Vim, typical ways to use Vim. I don't use the extensions to Vim, really, uh, but and so I know it's not very flashy, but I'll just go ahead and save my file. I know it's not very flashy, but I just wanted to show sort of a typical way uh, that I use uh, Vim. And I guess uh, by, by saying that, I just wanted to say, uh, goodbye to Bram. I never knew Bram, uh, but as I say, I loved his work on Vim. So thanks very much, Bram. Uh, what'd you think of this video? Let me know in the comments uh, below. Uh, many of you support me on Patreon and thank you very much for that. I know I say it every week, but you really do make the channel happen. Some of you are sponsoring me at a higher level and I want to recognize you here, especially here for that. Uh, also visit our website at freedos.org. Join us on Facebook. Follow us on Mastodon and consider supporting me on Patreon. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.